everyone, my name is Rachel. I'm serving with the Lakes Region Conservation Corps at Squam Lakes Association. Today I'm going to be sharing some important info about Multiflora rose, an invasive species that's found in the Squam Lakes watershed. It was brought to the U.S. in 1866 from Japan. It was primarily used as rootstock for ornamental rose. In the 1930s, they were used as highway medians to reduce glare and impact. They were also used as living fences for roaming livestock. In the 1960s, some states' conservation departments even encouraged it for wildlife cover. That includes cottontail and pheasants. It's found in fields or pastures, roadsides, open woodlands, and forest edge habitats. It thrives in well-drained soil, and it's also shade tolerant, but it can also grow in sunny open areas. It's spread mostly through birds that eat the seeds and defecate them in new areas. These seeds can be viable underground for 20 years. Also, when a branch grows down towards the soil, it can throw its own roots into the soil and create a new plant. So here behind me we have our own multiflora rose. They usually grow between 10 and 15 feet tall and have clusters of white, fragrant flowers. They also usually have a cluster of small, bright red rose hips that will persist during the winter. So here we have a little snippet of the branch and I'm going to show you some key identifying features. So the first thing you really want to look for um, is not the flower because the flower is not going to be there all year round. What you do want to look for are these fringe stipules. Fringe stipules are these wide base of the leaf and they usually have what we would call fringe or little tails, kind of like a uh, toothed. And then you also want to look for the thorns. And so the thorns are usually in pairs, like this, but they can be singular. And they're always curved like a cat's claw. So the best way to tell that this is multiflora rose, an invasive species, and not a native rose, is the thorns. So like I said, these will always be in the shape of a cat's claw. The native roses will have very straight, bristly thorns going all up the side and not just in pieces. The other way to tell is the flower, which you can't always rely on because it's not always around. But this flower is white and native rose flowers are always pink and they'll never be any different. So if you see a pink flower, that's definitely a native rose. Multiflora rose can be a big problem for our native species. They form dense thickets that crowd out other plants, which causes a loss of valuable habitat. They also have a high seed production. Each plant can have 500,000 seeds per year, and like I said before, those seeds remain viable in the soil for 20 years. So if you find multiflora rose on your property, here's a few ways you can remove it. First, you're going to want a good pair of gloves because they have thorns and you don't want to prick yourself. You're also going to want a really good pair of loppers so that they cut straight through the plant. And the other thing you're going to need is some eye protection so that if it's above you, nothing falls into your eyes. For small plants, you might be able to hand pull them, but for larger plants like this one here, you're probably going to need some loppers and you might need a shovel when you get down to the roots. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut off all the top branches, just like that with the loppers. Once you remove all of the top branches, you can get down to the roots much easier. Make sure to remove all of the roots to prevent re-sprouting. Monitor the area for the next three to four months and remove any re-sprouts that show up. You might have to continue this process for the next two to four years because multiflora rose is so persistent. Goats don't care about thorns, so if you happen to have any on your property, let them roam where multiflora rose grows. The only problem with this method is that you need at least 10 goats for it to be effective. Once you've cut all of your trimmings, take them all and put them in a nice dry area where there's sun so that it'll dry out for the next few days. If it's possible for you to burn them on your property, that's the best option. But if you're not allowed to burn in your town, you can bring them to the local dump. We don't recommend using herbicides to remove any invasives on your property. The reason for this is that herbicides can negatively affect our watershed by adding excess nutrients. Now that you know how to identify and remove multiflora rose, we hope that you'll help us in stopping the spread of invasive species in the Squam watershed. If you find any multiflora rose on any SLA property, please contact us. Thanks.